This doesn't do that, however. No, it doesn't. Why it doesn't. not? And because in the Constitution, because because in the Constitution, it says that the states shall ch the legislate legislatures of the various states shall decide how the electoral votes shall be cast. So this is perfectly constitutional to go th this route. Not necessarily. As, as you also know, the Constitution says that no state may enter into a compact with another state without the consent of Congress. Right. And whether this violates the compact clause is something that the legal scholars debate. But there is a, a I think, a pretty think strong right, argument. I think you're right that they may have to ask for the consent of Congress after they get a sufficient number of states. That's that's an issue that probably will be resolved. But, they, but this and thing it, that Colorado has approved do. does not re ask for congressional consent. I mean, if they, I, I agree, if they went to Congress, if they said, once we get the 270 electoral votes, then the next step is we ask Congress for consent, and after Congress consents, then it goes into effect. But what's going through the Colorado legislature now is not that. It says, we're going to put this into effect without congressional consent, and then we are going to have a constitutional crisis on our hands uh, if that changes you, the result of an election. It's a Supreme Court decision. I don't call it a constitutional crisis. But getting back to it, if, if you need to get congressional approval for this, why not take this to uh, to the to the Constitution? Why not do an amendment? There, uh, there are polls. You know, the, po there, there are polls put out by people who support your idea who say right. this is a wildly popular. Sixty some percent of the population wants wants this change. Well, right. it seems to me that would be uh, that would be no no thing. There's nothing as a slam dunk in amendments, but that would be really popular. Well, I think it would be more difficult to pass it as a constitutional amendment. We people have tried to do that before. Richard Nixon actually supported um, this as a constitutional amendment. A lot of Democrats and Republicans over the years have. But um, the problem is that you need three quarters of the states to do it, and states that consider themselves to be small states and advantaged by this um, additional power that they get probably wouldn't support it. So Right, and that's, a, that's another protection we have in our Constitution for the small states, and you're end running the Constitution. And, well, and, 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 and oppressing the small states. Now, the point of I'm the following the Constitution. The Constitution well, says that the legislature can say that the way we decide to send our electoral votes is by who gets the largest popular vote in the country. You know, the first but, but and the, the, and the, the compact, the the first, compact is violating the Constitution. If Colorado said we're just going to do this unilaterally, I, I agree that Colorado has that has the power to do that. But when you say we're going to do it as part of a compact with other states without the consent of Congress, and in fact, but done I didn't in a say, I didn't say we we're going to do it without. But the, the compact, of but the, this is, but it's the bill does. It's silent. How? Well, it's silent. It's sort of like you were saying about the Constitution being silent on whether African Americans or women can vote. It's they they, they, they left that matter to the silent. states. It, it is for for a time. I understand yeah. your point. The the courts will, will take that up. But there's right. a couple points that, that we haven't addressed yet. Let's let's address what I think okay. is important to many of us uh, here. What about Colorado? Tell me how this is good for Colorado. Under the I think, personal, I think Colorado, under the system we have right now, Colorado is, is a you know we've got nine electoral votes. We are a sizable state. We're not huge, but we get a lot of attention. We are a swing state, and that's good for us. Why would we want to negate our power to whatever you know if if in um, if if Obama? I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because because first, when we're picking the president of the United States, I think we should look at the benefit, the best benefits to the United States, and not to ourselves. Not a selfish concern for Colorado's benefit. Second, Colorado happens to be a swing state right now, but that could change. We weren't a few years ago. We might not be again in a few years. There shouldn't be this lottery of what states are important every four years, and those are the states that get all of the attention. If this bill were to pass, and enough states were to pass it, then every vote in any part of the United States would count equally and you'd have to go around the country getting votes from everywhere you can. And you know, I ran statewide in Colorado and I didn't just spend my time in the metropolitan area saying I just I'll get all my votes here. I traveled around the state because I needed votes from everywhere. And that's how the presidential candidates would have to act if votes counted everywhere. If if uh, President Bush, or a Republican president, might win because he picks up 45 percent in California rather than 40 percent. We are also headed towards the mother of all constitutional crises with this bill when we have a, another close election. Can you imagine, was, what if the 2016 race between, say, Joe Biden and Sarah Palin is as close as the Kennedy-Nixon race? Then you're going to have a national recount. and. Every, not, not just recounting the votes in, say, one close state, 
but re having to recount the votes everywhere in the country. Can that can't? Can you imagine that actually yeah, the, being done by December you, 18th? You're moving, you're moving on to my my second thought, which is which is voter fraud, and it it, it exists. It's harder to to, this to is, get. This is you know if if we had a tight election. Instead of having yeah. a state where we need to focus a recount, we're going to have a nation that we're going to need to have a recount. And the argument actually goes my way on that issue because right now, um, if if you have if one state like Florida can make all the difference, then there's much more incentive to have fraud in that one state because that could throw the whole election. If every person's vote counted the same throughout the whole country, then it would be much less able to affect the election by. Some oh, people oh, in one place deciding oh, to engage oh, in fraud. The, the, the heart of the places where the electoral fraud organizations like ACORN operate is, is, huge, is huge cities. B Brooklyn, Los Angeles, places like that. If ACORN, but when ACORN cheats now and registers people who aren't, who aren't should properly be allowed to vote, well, that's a whole no, other, no, that's, that's what, a whole other no, issue, when, when and it has not, nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, here. Yeah, but, but, it, but, it, but it does because yeah, I know, it, I know. All, you, all you guys have this bugaboo that ACORN has a lot to do with what happens in the elections. I will say, well, election we'll fraud it, has a lot to do with what happens in elections. And, and uh, Republican organizations don't engage in. In, uh, I wish fraud. if they did, I wish they did a lot better job. I'll well, tell you that much. And yeah, but the I mean, point, but, 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 but the, the, the point is, election fraud. Election fraud is easier when there is a compliant government that really tacitly supports the fraud. The nice thing is, the electoral college insulates us from the fraud that takes place in New York City or Los Angeles or Dallas because it's it doesn't change that state's elect. It's not. It, the contagion doesn't spread because there's such a large margin of victory for one side or the other in those states. It means that when you cheat in the Brooklyn election, it doesn't make, it doesn't add anything cumulatively would, to whoever wins New York. What would have what would, what would, what would happened if we needed a recount? What would a recount look like in, on a national scale? Well, first, it's uh, extremely unlikely. We haven't had elections that have been decided by 500 votes nationally. They can be in a state. Kennedy Nixon was was, well, was over 100, extremely votes. close. Over 100,000 votes. With, 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 with lots of disputes, and you could recount. Well, we only got a minute left. So, what, what, could, could we handle a would, national I think, recount? I think yes, we could, but it would be much less likely to happen than uh, one state being so close and then holding the key to the whole uh, election. A couple seconds left. Will Bill Ritter sign this? I think he will. I think that. I, like you said, a majority, of, a large majority of the people in the country think that we should elect the president of the United States by the person who gets the largest number of votes in the United States. So I think he will. I, I agree with that prediction. Governor Ritter has treated our taxpayers' bill of rights and the state constitution with contempt. So there's no reason to uh, that he'll take his oath to the United States Constitution any more seriously. <laughs> and on that, we'll leave it. Dave, thank you. Senator, thank you. Good to have you back. It's always a treat. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. Go to our website, independenceinstitute.org, and we'll see you next week. Jab, bamboos of new canoes of pippity pop she call. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off.